Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome or welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my 10 top tips for airplane travel in the summertime. Uh, these are tips that I've used for years. This entire video I scripted on a flight on our way back from California. And yeah, it's, it's going to be a busy travel season as it has been. We know this, uh, but hopefully these tips are going to help you get through it with a little more, I don't know, humor and maybe make you feel a little more first class even if you're like me and you're predominantly flying in coach. Now, I am wearing my Disney Cruise Line Pride hat. I'm going to tell you why I'm wearing it at the end of the video. There's two reasons, and you're going to want to stick around all the way until the end to find out. So I have my computer in front of me. I have my list. Let's dive right in. Number one, book as early as possible and choose direct flights if you can. Now, I know that is not possible for all of you, but I know that I am the person that a lot of times I'm looking at those connecting flights or the flights with a little bit of a layover going, oh, wow, I could save $100 or $200, and wouldn't that be amazing? And during a lot of the times of year, that is a great idea. Save that money. During the busy summer travel season, don't do it. <laughs> if you happen to live at an airport where you can fly nonstop or direct, fly nonstop or direct. There are just too many cancellations, too many delays. And obviously, if you miss a connection when every single flight is booked solid, it's a lot less likely that you'll be able to get on another flight. So just do yourself the biggest of favors and understand that you're going to have to pay a little bit more, but it is always worth it to book a nonstop or direct flight. Number two, if you can't book direct or nonstop, if you live near an airport that doesn't offer that, Make sure you allow plenty of time for connections. Again, delays and cancellations are numerous right now. I was just sitting next to a woman uh, a couple of different flights ago. By the way, I fly at least once a month, and she sheepishly looked over at me, and she was getting a little bit anxious as our flight was a little delayed. She said, I only have 40 minutes before my next flight. Now, keep in mind, we were getting ready to land in Atlanta, which is one of the busiest airports in the world. And she said, do you think I can make it with 40 minutes. Now, what I wanted to say was, there is no way you are going to make your flight. What I said instead was, well, I'll be rooting for you. All you can do is give it your best shot because I didn't want to be the bearer of bad news. Honestly, I didn't want to have to take that on. But 40 minutes at Hartsfield-Jackson is not enough time. And keep in mind, when you're looking at the landing time for the one flight and the time the next flight is taking off, that means that her flight was boarding as we were landing. So just give yourself margin. Uh, you know, worst case, you spend an extra hour in the airport. Not the worst thing in the world. Get yourself a coffee. Find a gate where there's not a flight going out of. Just chill, relax. If you can, go into the Sky Club or the Airline Lounge. I'm going to talk about how to get into that special place in just a minute. But yes, allow more time than you normally would. And definitely, if you're flying into Atlanta, allow more than 40 minutes, please, I beg of you. Number three, if possible, fly earlier in the day. And here's why. If there are flight cancellations, um, the, the chances of the flights getting delayed increase greatly as the day goes by. And that can be due to weather, staffing issues, you name it. Uh, the first flight of the day can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes those do get slightly delayed. My sweet spot is kind of mid-morning, but what you really don't want is the second to last or the last flight of the day. Because if that flight gets delayed or canceled, you're hosed. And although the airline is supposed to accommodate you, that can be a hassle. You're then stuck with flying standby the next day. Your trip ends up getting extended a day or worse, you end up not getting to your vacation till a day later than you had planned. So I just steer away from anything close to the end of the day. And I usually like to book like the second flight. I don't know why, that just seems to be my sweet spot. But for sure, don't book late afternoon or certainly not the last flight of the day. Number four, and I know this is gonna get a lot of pushback, but just trust me on this, don't check a bag. I don't think it's a good idea to check a bag any time of the year, but during the busy summer travel season, especially checking a bag creates 
hassle. Use things, fabrics that you can wear over and over. The shirt I'm wearing is merino wool. There are fabrics that do a really good job of that. Maybe you have access to laundry where you're going, but doing carry-on only is the probably best tip I have for you this summer because think of all the things that have to happen if you check a bag. Number one, you have to check in your bag at the airport. Scott and I were just trying to check a bag for our beach trip in Atlanta, so it's not like I haven't done this even though I say not to. And the wait to check in our bag, even with Premier, was almost 30 minutes long. Premier is Delta's like best customers. It's supposed to be like the fast pass line, but it was still 30 minutes. So you've got that. Then you've got the possibility of if your flight gets canceled and then where are your bags? And then your bags are somewhere and you're trying to find your bags and you're trying to, your bags are maybe get there and you don't get there and how does that work out? So that whole ordeal. Then when you get to your destination, you have to wait at baggage claim. Uh, one of the things that I've heard a lot of people complaining about, again, this goes back to staffing issues, is it being an hour, sometimes two hours waiting at the carousel for your bags? That isn't fun at all. And then of course the things I always talk about as far as why I prefer to do carry-on is it's just a lot less to have to deal with. You're not getting your bags and maybe you're going to your hotel, traveling on public transportation, and you're wrestling around with these huge bags. It's a good idea to do carry-on only any time of the year, but during busy travel seasons in the summer, I think it is the only idea. I am leaving for a um, eight night trip. It is a Mediterranean cruise and I will be doing carry on only. So if you haven't subscribed yet and turned on your bell notifications, do that because you won't want to miss that video. I'm already deep in the preparation for it and I can't wait to bring it to you guys. Number five, allow plenty of time to eat if you plan to eat in the airport. This is something that Scott and I started noticing uh, right after we all came back from the pandemic and it has not improved. Wait times for counter service restaurants at the airports are very, very long. Um, Scott is an airline pilot, oftentimes will have like maybe 20 or 30 minutes and he's finding that he tries to get into the airport to get food and he's still waiting in line and has to get out of line and go get back on his plane and he doesn't get to eat. So he's taken to packing a small cooler with like so much food you wouldn't even believe. But take a tip from my husband, the airline pilot, and don't plan on eating at the airport. If you don't have any other choice, just make sure you leave plenty of time. I usually like to eat before I leave home and then I will pack like a protein bar or something. But yeah, it, it I keep thinking it's gonna get better every time I fly and every time I fly, I look and the lines are just ridiculous and they're still not doing in a lot of the airports kind of what I used to consider normal operating hours. A lot of places I'm noticing are closed still and things like that and it has to be staffing. But just know that going in, if you have to eat at the airport, just allow plenty of time. You starting to sense a theme here? Mm -hmm. Yep, me too. <laughs> okay, number six, allow 40 to 50% margin onto everything that you do. If you're a person that normally likes to get to the airport two hours early, get to the airport two and a half hours early. Just add those buffers, again, with the connecting flights. Add even more time. Even as you're traveling, let's say if you're, if you're going to somewhere in Orlando and you have to get back to the airport, allow extra time for travel. Just everything is going to be busier and it's always better in my view to allow more time and not need it than to not allow enough time and to end up frazzled and hurried and that is no way to take a vacation. So yeah, just pad time. By the way, I give you permission to share this video with whoever it is in your life that thinks that they can get to the airport 45 minutes before the flight in the middle of July. We all know and love someone like that, Scott LaForge. So. And he knows better, so I'm just saying, it, you're not alone, we all struggle. Probably if you're that person, you're not watching this video. Number seven, make sure you have downloaded the app for your airline and also that you've signed up for text alerts. This is the quickest way for your airline to communicate with you, whether it be a delay, a flight cancellation, a gate change. Uh, Delta's app actually works really, really well. And, and you know, some of you still don't feel comfortable using it for your actual boarding pass, no problem, but still have it because when they have a gate change or a cancellation, that's how you'll find out the quickest. And it just gives me so much peace of mind 
mind, it's very easy to rebook travel if you need to. You can use the chat feature, which I find is typically a much quicker way to get a hold of a representative than either calling them or waiting in line at the airport should you have a flight cancellation or a delay. The apps are so helpful. Now, I can't speak to the apps for the other airlines, uh, but I know that Delta's in particular, when it works, which is most of the time, is incredibly reliable and is the best and fastest way to not only for me to find information, but for Delta to communicate information to me. So definitely use your airline's app. Okay, and number eight, consider opening a credit card if you are a frequent flyer and you always use the same airline. Uh, I am a Delta Reserve card member. I will actually put a link down in the description box that will get you some bonus points if you sign up. It's not an affiliate link. It's just a, like a referral link that anybody can get. But I love my Delta Reserve card. It allows me to get into the Delta Sky Lounge. Uh, the perks are great. Uh, it allows me to get upgrades. It allows me to elevate my status a lot quicker between a combination of flights and also the money that I spend. Now, we always pay off our balance every month, but we use that credit card, well, I do with my business for pretty much everything that I do. And as much as I travel, obviously it really adds up, but it's, it's definitely worth it. And I would say it's worth it to pick an airline, probably the one that flies predominantly out of your town and use that airline, use the credit card. You really will see those perks go a long way. And I have been a reserve member for as long as they've had that card. I've been an American Express member since 1992. I love American Express and my Delta American Express in particular is a great product. Can't say enough good things and you will earn extra perks. And in the summer travel, especially who doesn't want extra perks? I do. I definitely want extra perks. Number nine, make sure you're prepared to gate check your carry-on bag. Now, a lot of you probably know this, maybe you don't, but if a flight is completely full and everyone has a roller bag, there is a very good chance that they are not gonna be able to fit all the roller bags on the plane. In order to gate check your bag, which is very easy, it's always free of charge, I have done it many, many times, uh, you're going to give it to them once you, uh, they're gonna tag it, and then you're gonna roll it down the jetway like you're gonna take it on the airplane, and then they're gonna take it from you right near the aircraft door. And other airlines might do this a little bit differently. But when I say be prepared to gate check, what I mean is make sure that your roller bag does not contain any lithium batteries or prescription medications, prescription glasses, things that you're gonna need during the flight or that you would be devastated if they somehow did not make their way back to you once you get to your destination. There's nothing worse, and I've seen it happening, than people having to gate check their bags and they're scrambling and they're having to open up their roller bag to pull out medications to pull out lithium batteries. It's no fun. And usually that's happening right before they're getting ready to take off. So it's a lot of added stress. Just to be on the safe side, if you are bringing on a roller bag and a personal bag, make sure that your personal item has everything that you would need and that your roller bag has everything else so that if that happens, you are all set and ready to go. And you may be a person who say, yeah, but I have preferential boarding, so that would never happen. Well, what if you get stuck in traffic on the way to the airport? or the train breaks down on the way to the airport and you get there very, very late, there's a good chance it will happen. So I always like to be prepared to gate check my roller bag and have all of my prescription medications, my glasses, my lithium batteries out of that bag and in my personal item. And number 10, be kind. Flight crews are gonna be working very, very hard, so please be kind and patient. Please listen to the gate agents, listen to the flight crews, and be kind to your fellow passengers. It is a super, super busy time of the year. People are gonna be stressed, people could be hot, people are trying to make the best of situations. Sometimes they're traveling with family, sometimes their kids are driving them crazy. So just take a breath, try to center yourself, try to have perspective, and remember to be grateful because air travel is not something that everyone gets to do. I know that I always consider it a huge privilege. There is never a time that I don't look out that window and I'm not grateful for how often I get to fly. I do still really love it. So if you use some of these tips, you will find your travel less stressful, especially if you allow enough time to do everything that needs to be done with just that little bit of margin. So why am I wearing this hat? So this is from Disney Cruise Line's Pride Line. It's actually 
in one of my favorite hats. So two things there. Number one, yes, I am going on a Disney cruise. I am so excited. I leave in two weeks for a Mediterranean cruise with Disney. I will be giving you guys details, more videos coming, packing videos, all of the things. I actually have a haul coming about my Disney cruise. But also I wanted to let you know that we are celebrating Pride by doing a fundraiser for the Trevor Project. The Trevor Project is a fabulous organization whose mission is very simple, to prevent suicide in LGBTQ youth. It just couldn't be more simple or more powerful than that. And I cannot think of a better way for us to celebrate pride than to give money to this incredible organization. I actually have a fundraiser going on over on Instagram, but I will also do it here on YouTube. You can also go directly to the Trevor Project website if you would rather do it that way. All your donations, no matter any of those three ways, are all tax deductible. Let's raise some money for this fabulous cause and happy pride, everybody. I wish you happy, safe, and stress-free travels. May you have a beautiful summer and whatever you're doing, I hope you're finding joy. I'll see you next time. Bye.